Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? All right, what's up, everybody? It's your boy ATB PTB. Y'all already know what it is. We in the lab, man. Today, I got a special guest. We've done ministry together. We rocked out together. Uh, same city for a minute. And so I'm super excited to have my friend, Pastor Curtis Friday, on with us today. How you doing, sir? Man, I'm wonderful, man. I, I appreciate the opportunity. I honor the first time I ever been on this great platform. <laughs> I've been seeing it all over the place, man. So, man, I'm honored to be on here. Yes, man, sir. To, to share. Yes, with sir, you. man. I appreciate you coming on. Of course, like, we uh we we talk on the phone and have different conversations and stuff and so it's like a look I guess a little bit of a window to the people, uh you know how we talk and yeah. how we get along you know how we deal with ministry, um but the name of the show of course is what's your element so without further ado what's your element? Man, I am. So I'm a pastor at okay. heart, man. I, I love people. so yeah. So I got that pastor heart. You know I rock. You know. Um, with prophecy, some people be calling me a prophet, yeah, you yeah. know, but I don't I don't go around taking on times, yeah. you know, whatever I use me as. But I do know, you know, I love people, man. So I, I passed it. I got you. I got you. Now, everybody has an origin story to, they, to their, their life. And as you know, ministry is difficult. Um, it's fun. It's uh, sad. It's like all of the emotions like bought up into one. You know what I mean? And so I think. My first years in ministry, I was wild, wild eyed and bushy tailed. I guess you could say like I was like, oh, snap, I'm going to be like Elevation Church. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to grow my church to eight thousand. You feel me? Like in my mind, I'm like, this is going to be crazy. And it's like, yeah, that's a fantasy world because, yep. you know, there's so many ebbs and flows. There's so many different angles to ministry. You know what I mean? So like with you, how did how did you get your start? And were you in the same type of mindset? Man, I was in the. So, so when I first started ministry, I was, I had, uh, I was an armor bearer for a pastor for maybe seven years. Okay. Uh, Follow my pastor around and, um, you know, just something just kind of hit me. And I, we, we kind of left that church, went to another church and I was sitting back in the back of greater Cleveland Avenue. I, I know some people know that church. I was sitting back there and God was like, there's something more for you. So I went and watched TV and I was watching, um, Pastor Mike McClure Jr. on TV. And I said, man, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this in the city. You know, so I had those big dreams as well. Like when I watched on TV, I said, man, that's what I want to do here in the city. Mm -hmm. um, lo and behold, man, what you see on TV ain't what you get in, per in real life. You know? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. You got to see what you want to see, but it's a whole story behind it, right? Yep, um, absolutely. So my origin story or, or my first start with ministry was like, hey, I'm going to do this. And I kind of went and went to Birmingham, Alabama for the first time on New Year's Eve. I believe it was 2010 going into 2011 on New Year's Eve and went. And I kind of seen this big church and I said, man, we can do this here in Winston-Salem. Yeah. That's just how it went. So, yeah. And uh, what 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 was the, the moment what was the moment, if you can remember, what was the moment where it hit you that like it wasn't going to exactly be the way you thought it was going to be? <laughs> like you said, you can have your dream. You can have what God told you um, because God gives us all a grace to do something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whether it, it like your church is the city's church, whether you are the city's pastor, like whatever that thing may be, God gives us a grace to do it. Right. And yeah. so like when did it hit you that? Whoever else you was watching wasn't your grace and you had your own. Like, when did it hit you? Like, oh, snap, I got yeah. my own. Yeah. So believe it or not, man, when I first started the church, I took five people down there, came back. And believe it or not, it didn't hit me until I got five years in the game, you know, because sure. you know, we came back and we started growing, blowing out the waters, leaving from this building to this building to the next building. It was just kind of completely going. And it hit me five years later in the game mm. when I started. I started, I was under a particular pastor. Some stuff kind of happened uh, with the pastor that I was under. So we kind of moved under this other particular pastor just by fault. You know, we had to. And I started, I started being in ministry 
and man, prophecy just started busting out of me, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, I realized that the pastor that I was under didn't have the grace for prophecy. It wasn't, I mean, he had the grace for whatever he had the grace for. Yeah. But I sure. was I was kind of pattering my church after that. And it was like I, I became lost after that, you know, like I mean, because God was using prophetic uh things in our ministry, and God was like, see your grace is something totally different than what you've been kind of accustomed mm. to doing yeah. all these years. And I believe that, that my journey going through this, uh, I had to kind of look back on it and say, man, just imagine if I would have just calmed down, figured out what my grace was, all yeah. the problems I had, you know, leading up to those five years, I probably would have navigated through it much better. Yeah. But I felt like when I first started ministry, I was looking at other ministries. You know, we all do that, man. If yep. the pastor figure they don't do that, man, they they lying to you, man. Yeah, we all, all kind of do that. Facebook was on the scene. You kind of seen pictures of everybody doing their thing. You would go to these conferences and it'd be like, hey, this the church growth strategist. And you would strategize how you could get people in the church. Right. And God, the grace of getting people to the church was on me. But the grace of, uh, but but me understanding the element, or like, like this show is, the element of, or the flow of what I operated in was lost. So I didn't know. Mm, yeah. In the room, I just didn't know myself yet, you know? Yeah. I think I, think I, I, think I know myself in this season, man. I, I, so I didn't know myself in my first years of pastoring. But the grace of pastoring has always been on my life. Uh, but <clears throat> because I had that heart for the people, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, no, that, that absolutely makes sense. And I think that's what now I know, like today, if you taught a class to young pastors or even just pastors just starting out, no matter the age, like that would be one of the things that you tell them, because I think that when we first start, we just don't have a clue about who we are. At least, you know, a lot of us, we, we coming out a lot of stuff for us. We're coming out of um, we're coming out of the black community. We're coming out of um, just different things that depending on where you're from, how you were raised are going to affect you later on in life. And yeah. we, we think that when we, when we come to ministry, like all that stuff just magically gets erased. We like, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. It don't, yeah. it don't matter that I was raised in poverty. It don't matter that I was raised, you know, in this particular church or denominator. It don't, none of that stuff matters. Like I'm serving the Lord now. Like it's on the popping. Like I'm a pa I'm pastor Tim. What we talking about? <laughs> and then, like you said, Five years later, six years later, however, and it starts dawning on you like, oh, snap. First of all, I'm not going to I can't be them. Yep, you know yep. what I mean? And then as you trying to figure out, well, if I can't be them, who can yep. I be? And God is like, yeah, you can be you. But then we don't understand what that means. We're like, what does it mean to be me? You know, so like what did it what did it how did it shock you? Or what was your first reaction or some of your first reactions when you realized? Like, I don't know who I am. Like, I don't know myself. Like, I got to figure this out. Yeah. So when I first realized it, man, I started going through this warfare. I think sometimes God allows you to get mature enough and get to a place where he has because he ain't going to stop. He ain't going to let things or the enemy stop so that the people who need to get saved, uh, you know, he ain't going to let it stop. They they got to get saved. So he's going to use you into that point. But yeah, I started yep. expecting more out of me. Right. So when I started when I started growing to a to a point, you know, in ministry, I start looking around and say, God, this ain't it. And mm -hmm. he starts telling me, I tried to tell you a long time ago. <laughs> right. Like you, you're not like everybody else. Right. So now you got to now you stuck at this place where who everybody is looking on to it. It looks like success from the outside. But from the inside, while I'm looking in it, God says, you think this is success, but it ain't until you find you. Mm. Um, and things started shifting, man. I, I, I just seen I just seen this, the ministry start shifting. Uh, people started leaving. It just started. You know, when I kind of realized, like, this ain't me. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm supposed to do. And that was about eight years in the game. So like eight years of ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been pastor in 11 years, so yeah. eight years in ministry, things started shifting. And God said to me, I mean, he literally said to me, like, you're going to find it surprise what I have to break down 
to get you where I need you to be. Ain't that crazy? Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. And things started breaking down so that God can get me exactly where he needed me to be, because I don't care what you do or who you try to pattern in your life at after mm -hmm. assignment that he has on your life got to be fulfilled. Yeah. If he's going to do it, he got to do whatever he got to do to fulfill it. So, man, when I when I start feeling it and I start seeing it, God starts showing me things what he had to shift in my life. And he starts showing me what he had to break down because yes. a lot of things that we think and, and, and a lot of people ain't going to catch this, but a lot of things that we think that is success, we built it. Right. And nothing lasts that we built. So I'm not I'm not saying that our church, that God didn't build it. I'm saying that there are certain bricks and pieces and things that's in the middle of it that was mine. So I put it in there because of what I saw What and I didn't seek him. I can remember, man, doing a funeral. I tell this story all the time, man. I did a funeral. Mm -hmm. I used to do all the funerals in the city, a lot of the funerals in the city. and People used to come and get saved. I did a funeral and people got saved. Drugs was thrown at the altar. Everything was crazy. And a pastor that was sitting in there, I never seen, I don't even know who he is to this day. I can't even remember who yeah. he is. He walked up to me and I know he ain't from here. He walked up to me, he says, there's a quite an anointing on your life. But guess what? You ain't going to fulfill what God has for you until you take a break for a while to figure out who you are. Yep. The man said to me, and I looked at him and said, so, so, so is this like year four, year five? Like what year are we in at this point? This was like year seven. Right. That's crazy. So yeah, he's in here prophesying and like, you're going to yeah. have to take a big break and which sounds just <laughs> crazy to a person who's like neck deep in ministry. Like, bro, I, I'm preaching all the time. I'm going here. You see, you see what we doing in here. You see, you see this funeral. It was just a hundred people just got saved and dropped their drugs. Yeah. Like it was crazy. Yeah. He said, Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to take a break. <laughs> I'm like, and I'm looking at him like, man, get out of here. Get man, out you of here. Yeah, you, you know, at this point. A lot of times tell us stuff, man. We be thinking they hating, but they really not. They they coming from yeah. God. There's a bit of proof in all the hate that you think yeah. it is, you know. That's crazy, man. And, 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 and I can hear the frustration. And people don't know how how fast the pace is when you're a senior pastor. Like yeah. everybody else gets to do 30 miles per hour. They get to hear from God, make mistakes. They get to take breaks and then find God again. It's like, bro, I got to find God every single week, you know, potentially Sunday and Wednesday, you know, and the, the pace of pastoring is like 85 miles per hour. Yeah. And when you're going that fast, you don't get to um, see what God is saying in the deeper parts of your soul. You don't yeah. get to see what the, the deeper things that he made, like you said, send random people to talk to you. But if it ain't elder so and so in the church or a prophet, prophet or prophetess so and so in the church it's like, I don't even really hear it, you know, and even sometimes the elder or the prophet in your church is saying something you still can't even hear because you're going so fast. And it's like. People have to have a certain level of grace for pastors. If anything, and you can tell me how you feel, but anything, if anything, I would tell people, if you want your pastor to see something, like help homeboy go on a vacation. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I, I know that could be a little bit like, all right, now we get into money and stuff, but I'm serious. Like, is there a way for y'all as a church to put together a package where this man can go on a break, this lady can go on a break and you know, there's preaching opportunities for maybe guest speakers or whatever. And you guys find a way to line up, you know, even two weeks worth of time where your pastor can go away to the mountains or wherever he needs to go to hear from the Lord. Like that's the most that is the, the biggest investment to me. I know there's smaller ones, but like a big investment to me for your pastor is to make sure that he gets away, gets out of town and goes rest somewhere. Otherwise, how does he hear at 85 miles per hour? He don't. He's going off the fly. I know a lot of pastors that's just going off the fly. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I've been doing it so long. I've got into a routine. I'll just talk about me. I've got into a routine sure. of pastoring where I've done it so much and so long and seen so many people get saved. It was just like a, you know, a snap of the beat. You know what I'm saying? I could get up there and just preach, even if I didn't study that night because so many things was going on. I had a funeral that night. Yep. Waiting going on, had to go to somebody's house and pray, had to do something for this person, had to go to somebody's hospital visit, had to do this, do this, and do that. And yes, we had other people that do it, but I was so hands-on. Listen, I was young. I ain't come from a church background, so I really yeah. didn't 
have the example of a pastor. So the only people I'm looking on is those people, those mentors, those coverings that I have, which are not in the state. And so like, I'm like, no, I got to be there. No, no, nah, that's my members. I got to, I got to be there. And you loving people so much and you're going, going, going to when Saturday night hit, it's a special. Yes. <laughs> you, know, you, know, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so this big break that I had, man, and I, I'm really grateful for it. Let me see in from a peripheral. Like I'm looking and saying, boy, what was you thinking? You know what I'm yeah. saying? I was like, hey, the zeal was so fire. People were so pumping you up. It was so much amens. And then when you look in for a peripheral, you like, yeah, they were happy then. But guess what? When you have to take care of yourself, then you will see what the real is. But you can't even blame them. <laughs> it was your zeal that yep. got you in the mess you know what i'm saying yep. so now i've learned so much as pastor man of what to do it and you can go to all the conferences you want to you can go to all the people you want to go to there are some stuff that you're going to get but there are some stuff that life and lessons can only teach you right yes, there's some stuff that you're gonna have to do there are some people i talk to right now bro and i say Nah, I can't tell them nothing. They're going to have to do it. To, they're going to have to do it. They're going to have to go through it. They're going to have to do it to find out. It's like your kids, man. You're just going to have to do it to find out that you're going the wrong route, right? Because yep. your route might not be my route, right? So you may be, you may have to hit this wall to pop back to say, oh, what was I thinking? Yeah. I wasn't supposed to go that way. Like, that wasn't supposed to be. I know it looked like, you know, all those people was getting saved, but where was your self-care at? Where was your mm. reading the word for you at? Mm. You know, yeah. like because when you pastor, most pastors are pastoring for sermons or 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 preparation or prepping for sermons, not prepping for life. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, hold up, preach. Where, where is your preparation for your life? Not a yes, sermon. Sir. You know what I'm saying? Because we always prep like. We always prep for sermons, but we never prep for life. Mm. And when life hit us, we got to go back on the sermon that we preached. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yep. Well, I gave that word for the congregation, but what word that for me? You know? Yeah. And, and that's and so, the thing. In this season. Yeah. Prepping for life. I learned. That. No, and I, yeah. I hear you because prepping for life. Like, what does that even mean? You know what I mean? Ain't nobody think about my life and my wife and kids and what I got to do. For, like, ain't nobody thinking about that because God's will is most important. And he's and God first. You know, all this other stuff that helps us to spiritually override our responsibility to our own souls. And it's like, what would make you think that God doesn't love you just as much as he loves the people that you're ministering to? So, like, he going to drag you through the mud like he going to tear you to pieces, you know, while and, and say thank you and kick you to the curb. And you you sitting up here in a hospital at 65, 70 years old. Nobody calling, nobody caring, nobody visiting because, you know what I mean? It's like that's yep. that's the reality. But it's like if you if you allow God to help you to take care of yourself, maybe you do have some savings. Maybe you do have a 401k. Maybe you do have a plan for you know, not just the, the nursing home, but like a, a, a plan of care for your your life after ministry and stuff like that. All those things are important because God loves you, too. Yeah. So you have you have a right to do those things just as much as the people. And so, you know, I think that I think that lashback that comes from deliverance and from demons and from all that stuff. You know, the Bible talks about seven demons coming back after you throw out one looking for a place to, to rest. And it's like. Not only do you have to have that fill back up with something, but it's like you might want to just be careful about yeah. the, the weak areas of your life before you go into throwing a bunch of devils out. Right. Because yeah. it's like where he going to come back and attack? Because if yeah. I'm him and I see that you're in poverty, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Or if I, I see that you're depressed because of your your poverty or whatever, but you having to preach to people. Imagine having to preach to lawyers and doctors. Yeah. But you go home on your twenty five thousand dollar a year salary, like bro. If I'm the devil, I'm attacking that. Exactly. <laughs> I'm about to tear you up. Really? You yeah. know, and the most attacks that we have because we were just talking about like when you found yourself or when you rolled into a place of ministry and you said, "Hey, this is me." 
We went into that place, man, and I'm talking about deliverance set free in our churches and in church, in our church services, man, people were throwing up. I mean, it was crazy what God was doing. And he told me, you in your element, this is mm. where you're supposed to be. Mm. But he didn't tell me that there's an attack coming because the <laughs> moment that yeah. happened, yes. my whole ministry got attacked, right? My body got attacked. My ministry got attacked. My marriage got attacked. I mean, it was so much attacks. So he told me you're in your element, but he didn't tell me before you go into your element, make sure that you are prepared for what you what what's that's going to bring or what's going to come after that. Because like you just said, when you go into that ministry of deliverance or whenever, whatever place you get into, if you a pastor and you go into that position where you in yes. your element. Yeah, whatever it is. Yep. He attacked if you're not prepared for it. Like you said, where when that demon get cast out, he's looking for a place, a home to go to. And guess what? A perfect place to go to. The person who's orchestrating the deliverance. <laughs> he's going right to the person who orchestrated. He's going to attack that person. Because if he attacked the head, he can kill the body. Sure. So yeah. that's what he's doing. It. That's, that's what he did. Yeah. And, and I think that, I think the best way forward from these moments of attack or the, these moments of finding oneself or these moments of realizing these moments where we realize like, Oh snap, it's not going to be what we thought it was. I think the best response is going to be vulnerability and humility. It's the thing that God can honor. It gives God space to do whatever. Cause at this point, I need you to kind of revive me or you know what I mean? I need you to bring me back. I need you to, Take me from death to life. I need you to rescue me like, you know, you know, clear and pump my chest. And I think the best way to give God space to do that is to humble ourselves. You know what I mean? So it's like, what is what does humility look like to you in, in this new season that you're in, which I want to kind of go into what's about to happen for you and everything. But like, what does humility look like for you now? What does humility look for like for your family? Just overall, like, what do you what do, what do you see it as now? Oh, uh, I see. I see humility as one, because um, in my season, I could, you know, in my season before I got here, I could say that I was in a place of uh, what I want to call it, that humility that can almost look like false humility. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yep. Passive, very passive, yep. passive aggressive. You know what I'm saying? It was very passive in this season. Humility is boldness. I'm. I'm bold about who I am, what I'm called to do. And I realize, hey, that's just ain't for me or this just ain't for me. And see, I had a problem with anxiety. I had a problem with people pleasing. Mm. And nobody's going to admit that. But I had a problem with it because I no, love let's, let's help the people. You know yeah. I had a problem with people pleasing, passive aggressive, all of that type of stuff. And when I when I had to sit down, the most hu uh, humiliating thing. But it was humbling to me is when I said, hey, y'all, I'm done. Right. And for me, I thought I was done. You know what I'm saying? I like, hey, y'all, I'm done. So I moved moved away from Winston and I had a perfect plan what I was going to do in this next season. Yeah. I said, I said, forget everybody. I ain't doing it no more. I ain't going here. I, and, and it can be a place in you. See, you know how you know you, you know when you know you ain't humble when you play the blame game, when you start saying well, that person, <laughs> this person did this, this person did this, and this person. So for a few months, yes, I was sir. in space. You know what I'm saying? Man, I can't believe such a thing. I can't believe this and this. So a few months I had to deal with that while working for another ministry, right? I pastored for almost 10 years. And then went and shifted and been a staff pastor at another church. So now it's like you got to get used to that. So that was the most humbling thing that I had to do. Yeah. And sitting there, God said, now you ain't about to sit here and blame everybody else for what you put yourself in. Now, mm. so we ain't going to throw away that people did do some things, but sure. we don't sit down and play the pity party game and, and make it. And make it seem as if life is over because somebody did this and you had nothing to do with anything. Right. Yeah. So God said, hold up. So let's just go down the line. Of where you <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. 
was passive aggressive. Hey, you wasn't bold enough. Hey, you didn't stand with you wasn't yourself. You was trying to be this. And when you was right here, you should have been right here. You should have prepared for this. You know, it was so much stuff that I realized that, hey, I don't care. And it's easy. So it's hard when everybody else tell you this. Because some people telling you this and they mad at you, right? Right. Uh, they mad at you for something that they think you did to them. So you can't hear that at all. But it's even harder when you're in a dark place by yourself and it's you and God. And he's going down the line. He ain't did nothing to you. So he's going down the line telling you, hey, check mark. Remember I told you? <laughs> Woo! Woo! right here check mark remember i told you you need to shift from that person and do this remember i told you you was being too much of a friend not a pastor remember i told you you should have walked this way so god put me at a position where i had to humble myself i thought i was being humble but it wasn't the correct humble some of us got an idea of what humble mean until god show you what humble really means i thought mm. i was being humble but God mm. said, that ain't my definition of humble. You passive aggressive. You, you, you too, you too, you being too personal. You, you, you too, you too much. Wow. Listen, you giving your heart to, you doing too much. Like wow. that's not my definition of being humble. My definition of being humble is serving me. Humble yourself under the mighty hands of God in due season. So when you up under me, I show you how to, how to move. Yes, you, sir. You're moving out of your own will, your own heart, what you think will make you better. You're not seeking me for what I think. So now is when you're seeking me for how you're going to move, you're seeking only things to make your flesh feel good. You're like, yeah, I'm going to do that for them because it's going to make me feel good. and It's going to make them feel good. and They're going to like me. And, da, 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 da. and God said, I never told you to do that. So you mad at them because they did something to you or they did this or they had to move this way. But I never told you to get them in that anyway. Yeah. I never told you to do that anyway. You thought you was being humble, but you wasn't. Yeah. That's powerful, man. And and that I, I really think that that's going to help some people, especially like ministry people and stuff. That's powerful. You said, you know, when when people tell you about yourself, but they may be mad at you, they may have any type of attitude. It's kind of yeah. hard to hear that. But when you're talking to God and he starts running down the list, it's like, how, how do you escape that? Like, are you going to stop praying? You're going to stop fast and stop reading your word? Man, that's powerful. Like sitting with the Lord and letting him give you his definition of humility for your life. Because um, yeah. I can see how it could get mixed up when it's when it's um, I'm the senior pastor. I'm this. I'm that and the other. And so the way I see things is the only way to see things. And God's like, oh, my gosh, you know, you're like, what are you talking about right now? And, you know, having been through that myself is really crazy. And I'm just I'm just thankful for redemption. I'm thankful for friendships. I'm thankful for um, bounce back. I'm thankful for people who understand and like grow in their maturity. Like, man, I was mad at you, but I actually see how I ain't no different than you are. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like I, I could pick on you. I could be like, man, you did this. You said that. But at the end of the day, it's like I did the same thing in some type of a way. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, how about we we high five and just call it a dub and yeah. just, you know what I mean? Let's just go into our future and see what God's going to do, because there's nothing we can do about the past. There's nothing we can do about all the things we messed up on, except forgive. I, yeah. I can't even be a Christian without forgiving. Yeah, for so, sure. You know, so with with that stuff and you coming to yourself and, and learning a new level of humility and we all got more lessons to learn. But I'm excited because you're coming into a new season where God has opened doors and we talked on the phone and we know that it's God because otherwise it wouldn't be happening. Um, yeah. He's making you pray real hard in this season and everything, you know. But like what's what's about to pop off, man? What's I mean, I know, but like let the people know <laughs> like what's about to go down. Man, so something crazy just happened, you know, with us. Uh, me and my wife had twins. Uh, we've been praying for babies for a minute, man. And How many years praying for babies? Man, almost 10 years. Like, my wife was pregnant one time, went eight months, lost a child, never got pregnant again. We in the church praying for everybody to have babies. They having them. We sitting there like, hey, hey, God, all right now. Like, we've been celebrating people long enough, God. What, what's good? You what's know what I'm saying? He blessed us with twins. We end up going away uh, from Winston. Long story short, going away, I just kind of got this call from God. I said, hey, all right now, I'll let you rest. You got to go back to where you called. You got to finish what you started. You know what yes, I'm saying? Sir. 
There, there's something that's a, so I always know that there's a grace on my life for Winston-Salem. There is something here, you know, I, so I've got the idea that I'm not trying to be big, just effective now. When I was younger, I wanted everything. I wanted to be big. I want all the seats, all the seats feel right now, not now, but right now, every strategy. Mm -hmm. But now I'm the matured enough to know, like, it's more about being effective, right? So he came back, man, praying. And I start hitting people up. Uh, I still had a database. Hey, y'all, I'm back. And God just started moving, man. There's a church that we were, you were on staff then, and we were looking at this church. And we would have had to do heck of a work to the church. I'm talking about crazy work we would have had. Yeah. To do. And we would have been paying uh, a lot more to be in the church. When I came back, man, the doors just flapped open, man. We, we about to go into that same building for way less than what we were going to move in. I'm talking about less than half of what we were going to move in there for. The partnership is there. It's wow. just or just open and God just gave it to us basically. And yeah. said, this is the season of partnership. You're about to do something. And I, what I see right now is about to happen. It's getting ready to, it's not getting ready to reinvent what we done. It's getting ready to add to what maturity and it's getting ready to be mm. way way much better than what it was. I promise, man, I can see it coming. I see what God doing in details of how he's going to move on our behalf in this season. So I'm excited about getting started, man. We are in a, we are in a, a season of trusting God, having yeah. faith, Yeah. but I've been here before. You know what I'm saying? These are things that I've been here before. So even me talking to God, God said, man, I took you through that before. Like you already know that if you trust me, I'll provide for you, you know, and it just takes me back to the scripture that says, man, all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and called according to his purpose. And like we were talking the other day, man, there's some stuff that's happening. Me and you both saying, man, if it wasn't God, this couldn't happen. Right. This couldn't. This can't be true. If this was your own wheel of saying, and I had a great opportunity to do something else with a way bigger ministry. And God said, I don't care what you try to do It'll never <laughs> work until you do what I tell you to do. And yes, what sir. I want you to do is shift back and get back in position because there are some people that are waiting for you to get back in position. I, I believe this is the season, man. Yeah, man. I believe it. I believe it too. And, and so you guys are going back into full fledged services at yep. the building that we visited some odd year, two, three years ago at this point, that was thousands of dollars worth, you know, of renovation. But now yep. you guys, uh, God's blessed and you're moving into that building. And so, uh, services with new renovations, with new renovations like not like we just go <laughs> have paint, you know, peeling on the walls and stuff. Like we're actually in here and it looks good. It smells good. Fresh carpet, fresh, every fresh lights, sound, you yeah. know, the whole nine. Yeah. So you're going to start having services in October this month, right? Yep. October the 15th, we're about to have services. Um, God is, God is leading me to, he told me something when I first came here, I came back and God said, I want you to say nothing for the first four months. I need you to be in solitude and prayer because what I'm about to do, you're going to need to have a consistent life of prayer because mm. going into the season, I don't ever want you to get back to the point where you used to be. Right. So mm. I want you System with prayer. And then he said, I don't need you to market the spirit going to market. Right. So he said, I don't need you to do a lot of marketing. You know, it's, it's a lot of people who say, hey, why don't you do a launch party? Why don't you do a launch this? And God said, see, this is the first test. And I told um, yeah. one of the pastors, this is the first test that you get to go and do it the way God told you to do it, not the way mm -hmm. nobody else said it. So I'm not doing it based on the trend. Hey, you, and I'm not saying nobody's doing it wrong way. I'm saying for, for me, God yep. told me to do it this way. Yep. Well, the God only way it's going to you do it this way. Don't mark it. Don't do no launch team. I want you to go in the system what I provided you with, and I promise you, I'll do the rest of it. You don't have to do anything else but what I said do. And I, I, I believe he's putting it together. We already got 40 volunteers already ready to go. We got things are opening up, sound equipment in, signs and stuff in. I ain't did no marketing. I ain't even raised the offering. Yeah. But God said, this is faith. This is the faith move that I got you in because the level you're going is getting ready to be blown out of the water. So, Man. Man, I'm so proud of you, man. I'm so proud of you and your wife. And yeah. I'm so happy for y'all with them two baby boys. And um, 
I'm just I'm just excited to see what God is about to do in this next season of y'all's life. And you you mentioned having a, a, a discipline of prayer and having that that set prayer that this time can keep you, um, you know, whatever God shared with you in the, on that personal level, like what that was for. And I think that's amazing. But it does lead us into our next section where I uh, I pray for the guests or I have the guests pray for me or for the crowd or whatever. But I really feel like in this moment um, to pray for you guys, and then I want you to you you to pray for me and Jen, you know, we got stuff going on and stuff too. And I want you to practice that discipline of prayer on us, you know? Um, so, but I, I did want to say, cause I know this is going to be public and a lot of people are going to see it and I'm going to make sure we air it, you know, before October the 15th and let, so we can let people know and give you, you know, just give the testimony of what God has done. Um, but I am thankful, thankful, thankful for our friendship. I'm thankful that God, you could say brought us together uh, again. I'm thankful for the maturity that God has, helped us both grow on both sides or whatever. I'm just thankful for it all, man. And my heart is like full. Um, and so if you don't mind, I'm gonna pray for you. And then you pray for me. All right. No doubt. All right. right. God, I thank you for, um, pastor Curtis and, and his wife, Shamika. God, I thank you that you have, um, you have put them aside for Winston Salem. You have hand tailored them and made them father. God, and the proof is in the pudding. God, I see how you have taken them even with their, mistakes, even with failures, God, you have still kept your hand on them because you had a plan this entire time. And God, you worked on them. You put them under spiritual surgery. You did things for them that no man can do, that only you could do. And I thank you that you're going to get the glory for that, Father, as people from the East Coast and the West Coast come to see what it is that their uh, hands are working on that you have graced them for. I thank you, God, that you have done that for the city of Winston-Salem. You knew the plan. You knew that they were the people and the couple, God, one of those people that um, you were going to use to reach the city of Winston-Salem. And so you did a work on them. And I'm just thankful um, to be called a friend to the two of them. I pray, God, that you would bless them, bless their home, their babies, bless their um, their church, God, bless the, the church as it moves in maturity in this new wave of revival. We're believing you for uh, miracles and deliverance and all these other things that are going to happen in the city of Winston-Salem, because that's what your heart desires. We trust in you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. God, we just thank you for Jen and um, Pastor Tim. God, we pray, God, that you just bless them exceedingly abundantly above all they could ever ask or think. We thank you for this journey, God, that they are on, God. We thank you for their acknowledgement of their call, God. We ask you to bless them for everything that they poured out that they didn't get paid for, the over and abundant faithfulness that they have to you, God. I pray, God, that every decision that's made in this season, God, that you will guide, lead, and direct, God. I pray, God, that all the children that are going after their goals and their dreams, they seen the example in the house, God. So I thank you, God, that they are even finding who they are, their gifts and what they're called to do, God. I pray, God, that even in this season of uncertainty, what this may bring or what this may look like, God, that you are clearly showing them the vision, the path, the view, and clearly giving them more than enough to handle every single move and transition that they have to do, God. I thank you for their hearts, God. I pray, God, that you you know, you release an anointing on their life to be able to even teach other married couples something with their life, God, and with their struggles and with their things that they've been through, God. I thank you for their testimony, God. You have declared in the word that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony, God. So I thank you, God, how their testimony has been built up, God, to do something incredible around the world, we thank you for this platform. This platform is a stage that's set for people to find their gifts, for people to know who they are, for people to find out what God has called them to do, to get into their element. So we thank you, God, that you are using this platform to teach people how to follow you and discover their purpose and their gifts, God, to do what they're called to do in this season, God. So I thank you, God, that you are blessing them abundantly. I thank you, Father for your covering over that life. I thank you, Father, for renewing and restoring relationships. I thank you, Father, for everything that you're about to do. I pray that you give Tim the confidence that's needed in this season to stand boldly, knowing what you put placed inside of him, what he possesses. 
to do for every ministry that he's connected to. I pray, God, that you give him everything that he needs more abundantly in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Woo. Revelation, uh, man, I've enjoyed this. I got 10 questions uh, quick. I got to get myself back together because I, I heard the Lord as you were talking, first of all, through what we just talked about, but then through the prayer, too. But um, I got 10 rapid fire questions I'm going to ask you before we get out of here, man, because people be wanting to know these things. And I, I just try to help people understand what's going down. So. Uh, all right. So invisibility or super strength? Uh, I think I want to be invisible, but if I be invisible, I probably be out of control. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just go the strength. I'll be out of control. And if I'm invisible, right? Bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be real hard to follow the Lord because I'm out here slapping people and stuff. Like, yeah. oh man, let me go ahead and get this. <laughs> All right. Uh what would you do if you won a million dollars? Man, I probably would build me a church. Uh man, I I I would do ministry, man. I'm, I'm seriously, I just said that the other day, but I'll do ministry and pay off all my debt mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and just do ministry. I think I would, I would bless, you know, bless some people do ministry. That's really in my heart. Somebody probably saying, man, you lying. I'm, I'm dead serious, man. That's just my heart. Now nah, you love this thing. I get it. Yeah. Uh, how long do you think you survive in a zombie apocalypse? <laughs> I think I'll survive. I just, I'm, I'm going to ask Jesus to come get me, man. <laughs> he said, I'm not trying to really survive. I just want to go up like Enoch. Yeah, I hear you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, texting or talking? I like to text. All right. Absolutely. Me too. Uh, and then uh nickname your parents used to call you. And I, I'm interested in this because I don't know if we ever talked about it. <laughs> they used to call me Kurt. Kurt. Okay. All right. <laughs> nothing, nothing too deep. Nothing too deep. Yeah. And then uh, if you could ask God one question, what would it be? Uh, uh, one question from God, what would it be? Yeah, if you could ask him one thing. Lord, give me everything I give me everything I want right now. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> right. I, if I could ask God one question, I don't know. I just, hey, when you coming back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me know. Let me know when you coming back. Just tell me when you coming back. Right. I don't want to play no games or nothing. The brother <laughs> just need to know. The brother just need to know how long he got. Okay, yeah, how long I got. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. All right, my friend, Pastor Curtis Friday. I appreciate you, man. Uh, I hope you have a dope opening October the 15th. At what time? It's going to be 1230 October the 15th. We start late, but I believe God going to do something crazy. What's the address? The address is, oh, my God. Let me Let's find do. it. I know, I know it's on Patterson, right? Yeah, it's on Patterson Avenue. And it's, it's on uh, Patterson Avenue. We're about to get you with this address. Service starts at 1230. Uh, it's going to be dope. The, the Love Church, Love City Church. What's the name of the church? Is Love Church? Yes, yeah, Love City Church at Love 3665 City. North Patterson Avenue. Say it one more time. 3665 North Patterson Avenue. We partnering with the Winston-Salem Christian Church. So we're doing some great things with them as well. It's come up and coming, man. It's going to be some incredible stuff we're doing for the city, the, the neighborhood around that area as well. So it's going to be crazy. Dope, 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 dope. All right, man. I wish y'all the best. Praying for y'all. And I hope y'all do the same for me. Yes, sir. All right, man. Peace. Please.